In this video, we're going to discuss some of the points for consideration when you're developing a design such as this for a wide format printer. So we'll look at it from two perspectives. One is that we are a designer and we want to give this to somebody who has a wide format printer. Or secondly, maybe we own a wide format printer ourselves and we are, are of course producing this design. So let's discuss some of these issues. There are so many ways we could approach this topic. For right now though, we're going to look at this from the perspective of we are the graphic designer and we want to give this piece of artwork to a sign printing company for printing. So what I'm going to do now is try to help you minimize the risk. So effectively, I'm going to try to help you not waste your money. This could be a three meter or a three yard banner print and this will be very expensive to print because every square inch of this design has ink printed on it. Okay, well what would, what would we do to start with? Well the first thing I would do is absolutely select every piece of text that is on here. Every object that I can possibly convert to curves, which would include these dice blotches because they have a bevel, up to a range and convert to curves, or of course control Q. So that's problem number one out the way. I don't have to provide any fonts whatsoever. Converting to curves didn't affect any of my colors so everything initially is ready to go. Well I'd simply select all of that and group it together now. So I'll group that together and I would do this for uh, two reasons. First of all your sign printing company is someone you need to form a good relationship with. And you need to ask them, what sort of um, guidelines can you give me? And it is most likely that they will suggest to you that the girl and, of course, your background be given to them in a bitmap format, and they'll probably tell you the DPI that they would like, and that all text or objects um, that are vector-based, which all of these are, be left as vectors. Personally, that's not how I would want to do it if I were you. However, they may really want you to do that. So that's something you need to be prepared for. For me, I would convert the entire thing to a bitmap just to help me play it safe. You see, if I select my entire image up to bitmaps and convert to a bitmap, and in fact, right now we'll actually discuss should we convert to a CMYK or an RGB color bitmap? And there's a lot of issues around this, but for right now, most modern sign printing plotters print using more colors than the standard four CMYK colors. Some of them have 12, 16 color worlds to create these amazing print jobs. So actually creating an RGB color bitmap allows for a greater gamut of colors. So that's the first thing. There is something else we need to have done, but I'm going to talk to you about that shortly. So an RGB bitmap 300 dpi for right now is the road I personally would want to go. Now what I would do is quickly check over my image that it looks about right. And as you can see there's a little bit of color loss there. It's not quite as intense. But even so I would send this off to my sign company and ask them could they print me out a sample just on a, an A4 so you can quickly have a look at it. Well I've actually done that. Let's have a look at the results. A good friend of mine, Michael from Effective Signs here in Adelaide, has kindly printed out some samples for me. First of all, the top sample is printed on a very cheap vinyl and the bottom sample is printed on quite an expensive vinyl. And what I've done is I've scanned those in, because I've got a very good quality scanner, to compare on screen the difference between uh, the end result and where I started. Well, as you can see, the first one, the cheap vinyl, is washed out. Not a great look. The more expensive vinyl is, it's rich in color, but it has a very underexposed look to it. It's, it's quite dark. So you see, by getting my sign company to uh, create a sample for me, I'm able to make some adjustments before we take that big plunge and print the whole thing out. What I would do is I would select this image and I would simply come up to Effects, Adjust and come down to Tone Curve. And simply I would select right smack in the middle. In fact, if you look at your tone curve, uh, sorry, your histogram, it actually is letting you know all the colors are down the bottom end. They're all on the dark end. We need to shift them to the right 
and generically brighten this image. So I'd simply click in the middle and move everything to the right a little. Turn the lock on and click OK. Now I would most likely go with something like that. I would ask them if they would do another quick sample for me. And they really should be quite happy to, because it's most likely a three meter banner is going to cost quite a few hundred dollars. So, you know, you don't want things to go wrong. So that's the first area of advice that I can generally offer that will make a lot of difference. Work with your samples, scan your samples in, and have a look at where it's gone wrong and what it is you think you can do with your original to improve things. Another area that you might want to consider is how you deliver this product to your sign writer. Now again, he may suggest various formats like an EPS file. He may want you to deliver it in an, in an Acrobat format. And all of these things make tremendous difference to the outcome. Let me quickly undo all of this. and I'll just zoom in here. This is our original that's not converted to a bitmap. We have a lot of things going on here. We have in the background there, we've got obviously those glasses uh, of that girl sitting over the top of a color background. Now, as you can see right there, then we've got this word extraordinary hair sitting over the top of that. And we've got transparencies going on everywhere throughout this image. So sending this to my end to my sign writer as an Acrobat file, I need to make sure I choose the right Acrobat format. In other words, I, I would not want to go under Acrobat 5, for example. You know, I'd, I'd prefer to go with a higher version of Acrobat. Does the sign writer support that? The converting the entire thing to a bitmap helps me to be guaranteed all of my transparencies and everything are correct. Let me now talk to you about the subject of knowing we are sending this to a sign writer before we begin. I would have approached this extremely differently. If I, would, if I knew I was sending this to a sign writer, I think the thing that I would start out doing is setting everything up correctly. And we didn't do that. So let me quickly walk you through that process and that will be the conclusion of this video. Okay, step one would have been to ask my sign writer, would he prefer that I set my page area up as the full size of the banner I want to print? In other words, would he prefer that I actually set my page size as, to the full size of the banner? And some sign writers will want you to do that. So in other words, you'd make this three meters long by 800 millimeters high. Another area, and not every sign writer actually knows this, you would want to also come up to Tools, Color Management, and you would want to make sure that you have set or turned on the RGB profile. If by turning this on, your monitor will display the generic RGB profile, and you really do want that because we're going to design in an RGB mode. Make sure that RGB is selected down the bottom here instead of CMYK because the RGB output for sign printing is the better way to go. The last thing that you would want to be sure that you did is again up to tools and options and under the workspace general option down the bottom here the rendering resolution. I would want to lower this back to the DPI that I would well my sign writer will print this out at. A three meter banner is probably going to be uh, printed to be looked at some 30 feet or or um, uh, some <laughs> quite a distance away, basically 10 meters or more away. You're, you're going to be a long way away from a banner that size. Therefore, the resolution is most likely going to be printed somewhere between you know 60 and 100 DPI. So the rendering resolution, which affects drop shadows and transparencies, remember we've got transparencies, uh, you want to set this to you know, something between 50 and 100. So uh, you know, maybe 75 DPI. Click OK. And that will make a huge difference to the file size for my uh, printer to actually work with. So those are some of the keys that you would want to work through with your sign printer and ask the appropriate questions before you begin. Well, I hope this has been helpful. It is a tricky area, and the greatest advice I can give you is work with your sign printer and help him to achieve the result that you're looking for.